The greatest success story in space travel has a name, and it's not the James Webb Telescope. No, the two Voyager probes have been journeying through the vastness of space for 47 years, continuously providing us with new insights into unknown cosmic worlds. As humanity's most distant outposts, these identical sister probes have now ventured into interstellar space, revealing that the regions at the edge of our solar system are far stranger than previously thought. Join us on this cosmic journey what Voyager has discovered at the edge of the solar system. But how can the strange differences recorded by the probes at the boundary of our solar system be explained? And what about the massive, mysterious, wrinkled structures lurking in the heliosphere? Looking back, 1977 seems almost otherworldly. It was the year Jimmy Carter became president of the United States, the last time the guillotine was used in France, and when the cult film Rocky won three Oscars. Yet, something else happened in 1977 that still impacts the present day the launch of NASA's two Voyager probes, Voyager 1 and 2. The first to leave Earth was Voyager 2, setting off on August 20, 1977, to explore the largely uncharted regions of the outer planetary system. Voyager 1 followed 16 days later on a different trajectory. At the time, no one could have predicted that this would mark the beginning of the longest lasting mission in modern space travel. Initially, it wasn't planned that Voyager 1 and 2 would one day be at an incredible distance of 24.63 billion km and 20.59 billion km, respectively, from the Sun. The probes were originally tasked with gathering insights into the outer planets of the solar system. But the mission didn't get off to a smooth start. Communication with Voyager 2 was problematic from the beginning. Fortunately, NASA experts were able to resolve the issues and pave the way for a record-breaking mission into the unknown. Today, we live in a time when the James Webb Telescope gives us unprecedented details of our planetary system's outer reaches. But nearly 50 years ago, things were very different. When Voyager 1 and 2 launched, our understanding of the distant planets was limited. Their first mission was to study Jupiter and Saturn, which soon yielded extensive data and numerous images. These findings took our knowledge of the gas giant and the ringed planet to a whole new level. While Voyager 1 headed toward interstellar space, Voyager 2's journey included more exciting stopovers. After a corrective maneuver in 1981, it was en route to Uranus, which it reached on January 24, 1986. By then, Voyager 2 had already outlived its expected lifespan by twice as long. Despite this, it not only provided new insights into Uranus, but also discovered ten previously unknown moons of the ice giant. Next came Neptune, marking what was supposed to be the final chapter of the mission. With no further destinations planned, Voyager 2's 9,000 photos of the outermost planet were seen as a farewell. However, the probe didn't just take pictures, it also discovered nine previously unknown satellites. Among them was Triton, Neptune's largest moon, which Voyager 2 revealed had a diameter of 2760 km, much smaller than the previously assumed 5000 km. It also found that Triton's surface had few impact sites and numerous geysers that regularly release liquid nitrogen. To reach the next milestone in the Voyager program, interstellar space, we turn back to 2012. This distant realm, beyond the reach of the sun's influence, is filled with interstellar medium composed of dust ionized gas and more alongside the galactic magnetic field and electromagnetic radiation. Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space in 2012, followed by Voyager 2 in November 2018. The two probes are traveling through different regions, providing the opportunity to study the interstellar medium from two distinct locations and compare their findings. Much of Voyager 1's data, such as particle density, was confirmed by Voyager 2, but the differences between their discoveries are both intriguing and perplexing. Understanding the Voyager discoveries requires us to grasp how the solar system's boundaries are structured. Surrounding the Sun is an invisible network of magnetic field lines, through which electrically charged particles known as the solar wind are propelled into space. The solar wind creates a bubble in the interstellar medium called the heliosphere, which extends about 18 billion km from the Sun. At its outer edge, the heliopause marks the beginning of interstellar space. Before Voyager 1 crossed this threshold, little was known about the area. Yet, its findings shocked researchers. For instance, the interstellar magnetic field is nearly three times stronger than anticipated.
meaning interstellar particles exert 10 times more pressure on the heliosphere than predicted. Despite the groundbreaking nature of Voyager 1's data, it came with a limitation. The instrument to measure plasma temperature had been defective since the 1980s. Thankfully, Voyager 2's counterparts still function, allowing researchers to collect crucial data as it approached the heliopause. The plasma around Voyager 2 increased in density, slowed down, and heated up as it neared interstellar space, which was found to reach temperatures of nearly 30,000 Dig C, far hotter than expected. However, due to the plasma's thin and diffuse nature, the temperatures around the probes remain surprisingly low. Voyager 1 and 2's findings at the edge of the solar system highlight many unknowns that still need to be solved. For instance, the exact shape of the heliopause remains a mystery. But thanks to data from Princeton University showing a 50% increase in solar wind pressure, researchers discovered that the heliopause is wrinkled with folds extending tens of astronomical units, billions of kilometers, into space. These cosmic wrinkles constantly billow and change, creating a dynamic heliosphere. Despite their age, the Voyager probes are too fast to be caught by these wrinkles, which chase them as they move through space. However, this pursuit means the distance between the probes and the heliosphere isn't increasing as quickly as it might otherwise. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.